right, what's going on, Game Changers? We are back. NFL Awards for the end of the season, 2023. We are getting into this. This is going to be a fun one because uh, it's just it's lighthearted. We're getting into it. And it's really cool, too, because we did, we'll, we'll attach it to the end of this video. We did uh, our predictions for awards at the beginning of the season, so we'll see how well we did. And you guys can check it out as well. Like I said, it'll be at the end of this video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, continue, follow the page. We give God the glory every video that we do. Um, you can just hit the sub button. It should pop up any second now, so it'll be on the side. Also, check out the description. There's ways to support the page. It will be in the description, so check that out, too. And we are about to get into it. So, NFL 2023 awards. My man, Matt, is going to be the quarterback of this group. He's going to read off who we got, who are the finalists for, uh, for each award, and then we're going to go into our predictions of who we think will win each award. So, Matt, who do we got first? So off with the comeback player of the year, we got three nominees here. We have Saquon Barkley on the Giants, uh, Christian McCaffrey, 49ers, and then Geno Smith of the Seahawks. Perfect. Nick, who do you got? Oh, Matt's going first, sorry. No, I was about to say, I, I thought, I thought yeah. he was the quarterback. Yeah, no, no what we did was I'm the running back, and he uh, <laughs> fixed the handle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, so between these three, I mean, th these are all awesome candidates. I would probably... I mean, Geno Smith is—he's probably—he's in second to me here. I don't think he—I don't think anyone could have ever seen that coming. No, uh, this is this is like a Rich Gannon year, like 20 years ago. Rich Gannon randomly at like 35, 36 years old took MVP, went all the way to the Super Bowl, and then lost to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Geno Smith—you know—he was—he is a bust. Like, there's no other way to put it. He was like—he had there were a lot of expectations for him from the Jets. He, he's been on a couple teams now. He had an amazing year, but they, you know, ultimately fell short. They don't think they—they they just lost first round, but. I don't know if he really came back from anything either. Uh, I'm not sure if he's. I don't know if he was. He may have been injured, I guess, the year before, but he just. Yeah. I don't know if he just wasn't really playing. This is easy to me, though. This is Barkley here of these three. Um, everyone wrote Saquon Barkley off. Nobody thought he was going to be doing anything after you know after these few injuries he had. He had an amazing rookie year. He was pretty good his second year, and then he just kind of fell off. Um, due to I, injury. Yeah, yeah, due yeah. to injury, really. I mean, I, I I never really lost like faith in him. I was hoping he'd have one of these sort of years at some yeah. point, and. I'm pretty sure this is in a contract year as well, so that fits. So he's going to get paid by somebody. And, yeah. You know whether the Giants decide to pay him or not. Um, it, it's got to be Barkley. He, he proved that. Uh, he proved. He just proved everyone wrong this year, honestly. Yeah. So. Love it. Yep. Yeah. Nick, who do you got? Um, well, I'm not just saying this because I'm a Giants fan, but I think there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of truth to this. Um, for me, it has to be Saquon because for all the points that you just made, it's like um, nobody really gave uh, Saquon any like um, shot of like having the season that he had this year. Mm -hmm. It's like, aside from his rookie season, which was like one of the best rookie seasons for a running back in quite some time, yeah. after that, he just fell off a cliff with the injury, and then yeah. he hasn't been the same since, and then he was getting hurt like in midseason and stuff. So people were wondering if like, oh, would he have this like, um, another Saquon season? Definitely not his rookie season. Him, I don't think he's gonna be able to get what he did in his rookie year, but at least make it to where like the Giants um, will get some value out of him, and they, got more than enough value out of him. Yeah. It's definitely worth um, the money that he should be getting. Yeah. So, hopefully. I'm, yeah, hopefully. If you or Daniel Jones, I'd definitely pick Saquon. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah. Um, yeah, for me, um, it has to be Saquon, comeback player of the year. And the other two, yeah, um, yeah you could say Geno Smith, but at the same time, it's like, I really wouldn't know if this is like a comeback year because it, it was like a quarterback battle between him and uh, Drew, Locke. Drew Locke. Yeah, so he just won a QB battle, and yeah. I mean, good on him. He had a great season, and yeah. I believe because nobody thought a lot of people were thinking the Seahawks were going to be the worst team in the yeah. NFL. We did in the playoffs. We did. So I mean, great for uh, Geno Smith, and then uh, okay. yeah, the other guy, McCaffrey. Yeah, so it's like. I, you could definitely say injury was the reason why yeah. he, but everybody knew that he was a beast. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, I wouldn't really say like, oh, he had a down year and then he came back. It was just injury that he came back from. Mm -hmm. And that was just it. Everybody knew that he was a beast because the games that he did play, um, if you look at fantasy football, he averaged like 25 points a game whenever he does play. Yeah. And obviously when he doesn't play, he's nothing. Mm -hmm. So um, everybody knew that Christian McCaffrey is the way he is. So, I mean, he did have, I believe it was like, a season where like he only missed one game, and that was because it was his first game with Kansas. Uh, no, with uh, the San Niners, Francisco, San Fran. Yeah. yeah. So like, um, I could definitely see why people would put him in that category, but he doesn't get it. In my opinion, it has to be safe one. Yeah. yeah. Magic McCaffrey on the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. That wouldn't be fair. Yeah. They try, I think. So. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna relay what these guys are saying too. I'm going Saquon Barkley. I am a big Saquon guy, um, but I agree 100 percent with them. Also, this is a crazy stat, too. I know there's an extra added game. 
but he actually beat the beat the uh, rushing yards that he had in his rookie season this past year. Um, so he has th those crazy numbers that he had in his rookie year. He actually surpassed them in some in some of those categories. So I agree. I think Saquon Barkley gets the comeback player of the year. McCaffrey kind of was in limbo half for half the year when he was with Carolina, and then he went over to San Fran. Obviously, when he got to San Fran, he he just dominated. And then Geno Smith, I don't want to leave out. I think they they got the. Uh, the picks correct for these three because I think all three definitely deserve it. Uh, Geno Smith just came out of nowhere, so I think that's a, a great pick as well. But for me, it's got to be Saquon. He's the big name. He was the main focal point of the Giants' offense as well, which is impressive too. In a throwing, uh, in a pass-first league, uh, they had the running back pretty much doing everything. So I got Saquon. So three and zero with Saquon Barkley. All right, <laughs> next one. Who we got? Next is uh, we have defensive rookie of the year. So you got two corners, you got Sauce Gardner on the Jets, you got Tariq Woolen Seahawks, and then Aiden Hutchinson is a uh, defensive end for the Lions. Perfect. Good Those guy. are three. This this one's hard. Like this these are three, like they probably not all pro years necessarily, yeah. but three pro bowlers. Uh kind of from what I'm seeing, like with extremely bright futures. Uh I, I saw Woolen flying under the radar pretty much the entire year, so I'm glad he's getting some recognition now, but it's hard to it's hard to pick against really any of these guys. Um I'll probably just stick with what I said at the beginning of the year. I'll give it to Hutchinson. He was, you know, he he was awesome. He had a, he had a few, I think, multi sack games. Yeah. Um, a few just random interceptions. You don't really see a defensive <laughs> like a defensive end's not supposed to be getting picks. Yeah. Like unless you like bat ball up in the air and then you catch off that, but they would randomly just put him back in coverage and he had like three picks over the year. Yeah. He's grabbed mm -hmm. Rodgers in the end zone at one point. Um, I mean, again, but there's an argument for Sauce Gardner. He was the number one ranked corner out of everyone in the entire league by yeah. a Pro Football Focus. If that's like a legit source. <laughs> and then, uh, but but yeah, I mean, I'll go Hutchinson here. Honestly, it, it, it's hard to pick though, so yeah, I, I could see any of them winning it. Before we move on to Nick, uh, I do want to I want to pump ourselves up a little bit because Matt picked Aiden Hutchinson at the beginning of the season, and we both yeah. picked Sauce Gardner, and they're all finalists. So mm -hmm. listen, what would you say, Fantasy Focus? Listen, we we took shots at ESPN. <laughs> yeah. Now we're taking shots at uh, ESPN. Yeah, uh, yeah, Fantasy yeah, Focus. Fantasy yeah, yeah sure. so listen, you got to come check out Game Changers. We know what we're talking about. Pretty soon, anyway. pretty soon, we'll talk about Fantasy Football. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> all right, Nick, who do you got? All right, well, yep. Uh, so I mean. I guess it's only since you picked the guy who you picked at the beginning of the season. Yeah. It's only right that I pick uh, my right. pick in the beginning of the season. I got to go with Sauce Gardner. I mean, yeah. he, like you said it perfectly, he was the number one corner throughout everybody in the league this year. And it's like, how can you compete with that? It's yeah. like you uh, look back at the old days with uh, the Jets um, corners. You had Darrell Revis, Antonio Cromartie, and those guys were like near impossible to throw to. Yeah. I remember that game back in 2010. I was living in Connecticut at the time. I was working at the BK, and I was checking the score the entire time, and I'm like. How are the Jets beating the Patriots? And then what I find yeah. out, and then what I find out is because Darrell Revis had like two picks on him, yeah. and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh well, I mean that sort of like explains it. And it's like Sauce Gardner. It's like he could become the next uh, uh, Darrell Revis, and like all these other uh, great corners out there. He's certainly on pace too. Yeah. And uh, that just that defense in general. That that defense has been amazing this year for the mm -hmm. Jets with Sauce Gardner as like their main focal point. Yeah. So I mean. And I think, um, yeah, he was an all-pro, but I think he was something else, too. I forgot it was. But it was, like, the first time ever that, like, uh, a first-year corner got, like, this recognition. I forgot what award that was. I have to look it up again. But it's, like, that's how amazing Sauce Gardner was. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to stick with my pick at the beginning of the year. I'm going to say Sauce Gardner. Beautiful. All right, so for my pick for Defensive Rookie of the Year is going to be Sauce Gardner as well. I agree with, uh, with Nick. And, listen, I picked him in the beginning of the year as well. So... He dominated, and the, the thing that people need to recognize about these uh, awards as well is if you have a name, a big name attached to it, you're going to get more more uh, push for the award as well. Sauce coming out of college, everybody was, he was already, he's already got a nickname, and he's already got this, this high profile, kind of like Michael Parsons. So for me, I think Sauce Gardner is going to get the award. Matt could be right too, where, where Aiden Hutchinson just went, went nuts this year, but he was kind of quiet in the beginning, and I think Sauce was just kind of, through the whole year, he was solid. So for me, I'm going to go Sauce Gardner as well. So Sauce Gardner even has his own sauce now. Yeah, he's yeah. a crazy sponsor. I was told that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Might be, you never know. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Matt, what do we got for the next award? So now on the offensive side of the ball, going for the rookies again. We have three nominees here. We got this is a good spread here positionally. Uh, so you have Brock Purdy of the Niners, you have Kenneth Walker of the Seahawks, and then Garrett Wilson on the Jets. Beautiful. Um, for these three, I mean, this one's easy to me also. I, I'm looking at consistency here. And Purdy, you know, it not it, it's not his fault really, but he just didn't play the whole year. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's done. He did some stuff that probably no rookie since like Ben Roethlisberger was able to accomplish, winning like that many games in a row. Um, but Purdy didn't play a full year. Walker wasn't. I don't think he was effective the full year. It took it took what Penny going on IR for him to, to be able to play. Yeah, kind of, Walk, Walker was amazing too. But of these three, Wilson was the most consistent. He's, I think, the first like thousand yard receiver for the Jets in I don't remember how many years. It's it's been a little while. Yeah. Um, I'd probably put so I I'd, I'd pick Wilson here. Uh, but I would also make an argument that if you're gonna it's almost like a double standard here. I put Brees Hall at least in the consideration. Yeah. Um, and then Olave as well is probably someone else I would at least put as a consideration. I don't see any other, like, I don't think there are too many linemen really that I would put out there. I like to give them love, but yeah, I'll go Wilson here. So I like it. Yeah. I like, it. Nick, who do you got? Um, so out of that list, I would have to say uh, my pick is Garrett Wilson because uh, throughout the entire season, he was um, who he was. He was yeah. a great receiver. He was making plays, he was making. Um, like yards, touchdowns, literally everything as like, how many quarterbacks did he have? He had Zach yeah. Wilson, he had Joe Flacco, he had uh, Mike, Mike White, White, and <laughs> they, he probably had somebody else too, but I don't yeah. know. But it's like he had, no matter who the quarterback was, um, it's where like he would still do his thing. He yeah. would still make the catches and he would still make the plays. Um, so if uh, that's a pretty good list, but uh, as well, like there were some uh, pretty good rookies this year. Uh, there was... Uh, Chris Olave. There was also, but well, yeah, Brees Hall was unfortunate what happened to him. Yeah. I will actually make the argument that if he didn't get hurt, he would win offensive yeah, uh, rookie probably, of the year. Yeah, I probably, think he would get it. Probably, and so. um, also as well, I thought Damian Pierce had a pretty good year. Yeah, um, he fell off. He, he fell off. I would say the yeah. last quarter of uh, the yeah. season because uh, that's when they played uh, teams that were really fighting for the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. and so they were just shutting them down. Yeah. And then um, Olave. He had um, a great season, too, and he kind of dipped in, I would say, like probably mid-season, and then he did good after that, but definitely yeah. not enough to put him in consideration, I would say. So yeah. I would I would pretty much agree with that list, but out of those three, I would say uh, uh, Garrett Wilson. And I thought Brock Purdy did amazing with uh, what he had to deal with, um, yeah. with like going 7-0, and and honestly, like um, I know this is hypothetical here, but it's like if he had actually played in that NFC Championship game, I think it would have been a much closer game, a much more competitive game. Not saying they were going to win the game, but it definitely would have been much better. You would have seen Brock Purdy still do his thing if he had not gotten hurt. Yeah. And then Kenneth Walker, I thought he had an incredible like midseason, and um, he um, did good in the last um, as well. But at the same time, I think he didn't play like a fourth of the season or something like that, and he still had good numbers and stuff. But with Garrett Wilson, he just was all season gold. like just mm -hmm. he was just gold so I'm, I'm going with Garrett Wilson yeah he's still salty about that uh he getting the prediction wrong with San Fran so you can see it oh you yeah. can see it a few minutes <laughs> out of him, so. for me I'm going to switch it up I actually am going to go Kenneth Walker and the reason why is because he didn't miss as many games as you guys think he did and then also Garrett Wilson even though he played the entire season there were definitely some dips throughout the season not his fault because we know the incredible athlete that he is but uh, there were some games where the quarterbacks wouldn't even look at him, which is just insane. Jim Flacco in the beginning of the year loved him, which I, I don't know why you wouldn't throw to him. But then I think uh, once Zach Wilson took over, there were some dips. And we know about Zach Wilson this year and, and how bad he's been. And the reason why I'm pushing Kenneth Walker is because he helped lead, lead the Seahawks get into the playoffs. Obviously, Geno Smith did his thing, but you need a good run game, especially in Seattle. And once Kenneth uh, Walker took over, he literally hit the ground uh, running, no pun intended. But he just, I mean, he, he played he played great. I believe he went over 1,000 yards. I got to double check that, or he at least was really close. I think he had like nine touchdowns or something like that on the ground. So um, he just came in, he did his thing, stayed healthy. I think he missed uh, like maybe one or two games with an injury. But besides that, he, he was pretty healthy throughout the whole season. So for me, I'm going Kenneth Walker. Um, we haven't talked about snubs yet, but I think this is a good category to talk about snubs. We brought up some. But for me, one of the biggest snubs was uh, Olave. Uh, he was my pick in the beginning of the year. And I think he's another one who was just consistent throughout the season. Yeah. He was on a bad Saints team, so that kind of doesn't help. But uh, but I agree. I think Olave had a real solid season. He reminded me just like Garrett Wilson, even though I think Garrett Wilson had a little bit better of a season. Who do you guys have this snub? Well, um, I, I did say the same thing with yeah. uh, Olave. But I thought also uh, yeah. Damian Pierce, um, yeah. he had a really good season as well. Yeah. Like There were some games where like he went over 100 yards and like – uh, five or six of those, and it's like, for a rookie, that's amazing. Yeah. And it's like, the Texans, they were just losing. But if you really look at those games, they made it competitive. And yeah. that was because of Damian Pierce. Mm -hmm. So I could say uh, him as well, uh, being, a, being a snub. So 100%. No Desmond Ritter? 
<laughs> just kidding. NFC. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, I didn't mention that's the whole league. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just messing. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> one day. Uh, what do we got for uh, for next award set? Next one, we got Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, so we got a couple nominees here. Tyreek Hill, Dolphins receiver. Jalen Hurts, Eagles quarterback. Justin Jefferson on the Vikings. And then Patrick Mahomes on the Chiefs. Mm. This is a tough one, too, because yeah. MVP and Offensive Player of the Year, they should give it to two, two different people. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm, it's just kind of weird. But, Matt, I'll let yeah. you go first. Uh, I mean, if you look at this one, early, probably halfway through the year, or maybe like a... A little more than halfway. If you looked at the first like ten to eleven games, it's Tyreek Hill mm-hmm. easily. He was he was on pace to have like two thousand something yards. So if if he would have sustained that, you know, he's breaking every record. He possibly won the MVP. But and, and again, like uh, MVP at this point is a quarterback award. So yeah. like I always, I, I I agree. Like I like to distinguish the two because yeah. like like Derrick Henry, I'm pretty sure a couple years ago ran for two thousand yards and he didn't get MVP. Yeah, it's he crazy. Got, like I mean, they gave it to Rodgers, but you know he had an awesome year, but. He at least got offensive player of the year, Henry did. So, I mean, in this one, I, I can't pick against Justin Jefferson here. He was just dominant all season. Um, I mean, he, you know, he had a few, like, dud games, I guess, like the, when Jair locked him up in, uh, in Green Bay. But uh, outside of that, I mean, Jefferson was, was just first-team All-Pro, like, clear clear choice, best receiver in the NFL. Um, I, don't, I, think he, I don't know if he got the triple crown. I don't know if he was close to it. He definitely had yards. I think he may have had TDs. I don't he may have had catches also, honestly. He, yeah. I think catches is, would be the one that he didn't get if he if there's one that he didn't have uh, yeah. have like the number one spot for. But uh, it, this one's easy to me. This is, is uh, Jefferson. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. I'm guessing Tyree Kill might have had the most catches, but uh, yeah, I guess you never know. Mm-hmm. Never know. So. Mm-hmm. What do you got, Nick? Um, I got to go with Justin Jefferson here. I mean, like the dude was incredible all year, and, oh, I, uh, and yeah, and I would and I would argue that if it wasn't for his catch against the Bills, the, the Bills, oh, that, the, yeah. that one hand, yeah, the crazy. Vikings were not winning that game. Crazy. That was that was on fourth down, insane, and that man. was like um, obviously it's like I would say that OBJ's catch was more like spectacular in terms yeah. of like the one hand, and then but then if you look at what Justin Jefferson did, it's like he he had like one or two guys on him, and he still was able yeah. to come down with it. And just the fact that like the ball would, did not hit the ground, it was still up, and it's like that basically saved uh, the game for the Vikings. Yeah. And pretty much all season, he's been making plays, except for that Eagles game where Darius Slay just like just like completely shut him out yeah um but yeah no other than that it's like justin jefferson has been the best receiver for a majority of the season yeah. you could argue between him and tyreek hill but if i had to pick between the two i would have to say justin jefferson that dude like obviously tyreek hill's faster but if i'm talking about shorthands i would say justin jefferson yeah. like i would say he's like the best receiver and it's like he had an incredible season, and I think he's going to have even better seasons as the years mm-hmm. go on. So it's yeah. it's definitely going to be for me, Justin Jefferson. Yeah, you could even argue that Justin Jefferson is. Uh, I mean, there's an argument to be made, but he's definitely top three his, his first three years in the in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So his consistency too is is very impressive. So I'm going to switch it up again, and I'm kind of contradicting myself. But the reason why I'm giving this guy the offensive player of the award is because he's not my MVP, and then we'll go into it when we get into the MVP award. I'm going to go Jalen Hurts, and the reason why, it's Offensive Player of the Year. So Jalen Hurts not doesn't just do it in the air, but he also does it on the ground as well. So that's why he's going to be my pick for Offensive Player of the Year. And it's funny because I normally do not like that we always give awards to quarterbacks, but this year I, I think this kind of fits the, the bill because Jalen Hurts, first off, he's led his team to the Super Bowl. He's got a ton of rushing touchdowns, and he's got a ton of passing touchdowns too. He's just an offensive weapon, so I think it makes sense. I'm going to go Jalen Hurts. I think Justin Jefferson is a solid pick as well. You can't go wrong with that pick. But I think they're the top two that you, that you pick for this for this uh, award for this year. So, what do we got for the next one? Well, any, any snubs on that? Or uh... um, I'm trying to think. Offensive Player of the Year. Um, I, I mean, can't I think mean, off the top of my I head. I mean, McCaffrey had that game where he threw for a touchdown, he, he rushed for a touchdown, yeah. and he caught a touchdown. So but that's one the... game, and he was kind of in limbo. Like I said earlier in the video, he was kind of in limbo when he was with Carolina for half the year. So mm-hmm. he, he, I don't think he his body of work uh, measures up to the other guys. So yeah. I, I wouldn't say that's a snub, but yeah. uh, what do you got? Runner-ups, I would say, like, I mean, you know, again, Jefferson, the reason I'm picking him, he just made so many catches, and like and he's just making catches, getting hit. He was so reliable this year. It's hard yeah. to pick against him, but... You know, someone that was also doing that all year was AJ Brown. I mean, that, that's someone you could possibly throw up there. Yeah, he's he's more of a runner up to me. I don't. I mean, if you're only going to pick four, these are the four. I can't yeah. really go against that. And then on the running back side, like Josh Jacobs was probably the best running back this year. Cool. And I don't know, just for diversity of like positional reasons, I don't yeah. know if that's maybe that's why you throw him in there. But yeah. 
Austin like, Eckler, too. Yeah, I think he got, Eckler's awesome, too. I think yeah. they said he was like 25% of the offense or something yeah. like that, which is pretty crazy. He checks it out. Yeah, so, so just yeah. Cool. Next uh, one. We'll go to defense now. This is Defensive Player of the Year. So we only have three nominees, which is kind of surprising. I don't know if it's normally like that. Yeah, it's weird. First one, Nick Bosa. Ohio State, uh, 49 defensive end. <laughs> Chris Jones of the Chiefs is going to be playing in the Super Bowl. And then Micah Parsons. So three like three pass rushers. No one in the secondary. No one in the... I, I mean, Micah Parsons, I get, he's, like, he's a linebacker, I guess, but he doesn't really... Not really. He doesn't really, <laughs> he doesn't really go into coverage too often. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's rushing almost every time. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, if, if this is a list right here, I, I think Parsons just kind of got in here. He was he was good this year, but I think he kind of got in here for reputation. Yes. I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have had him in this uh, in this final three at least. Chris Jones is good to see him getting some recognition, but this is this is Bosa's award to me. I think it's like pretty clear cut. Yeah. Uh, Bosa probably could have made an argument for each of the last three years. I mean, JJ Watt he, he tied the sack record last. Or, I'm sorry, TJ Watt tied the sack record last year. Um, Bosa probably would have had it if not for him. Uh, but Bosa he's been right up there these these last few years. He, he's just been he's just been a monster. I think he led the league in pressures this year. He probably led the league in QB hits, and I don't know, he may have got the sack title as well. So that's. That, that's like the, the the pass rushing triple crown. I mean, that's that kind of speaks for itself. So it's it, it's just hard. He, Bose has been so consistent, and you know that, that's that's my pick. Uh, Who? Uh, when did he tear his ACL? Was it last uh, year? Nick Bosa. Yeah, uh, that was like the twenty. I think it was when I was in Jersey. It was like three or four years ago. Oh wow, well, I'm way off. Yeah, yeah. my couple years back, I think. But wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's, he's came back from it though. So he, I think he was comeback player of the year, like one of the nominees. I was gonna say, yeah, I could have sworn it was last year two years ago. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> maybe I slept through an entire year. So. <laughs> Yeah. Nick, who do you got? Uh, so for this one, I got Nick Bosa. Oh, H. I'll be waiting for an I.O. Well, I mean, I was you, or if you would have said, I would have been like, what? I said it in my head. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so yeah, for me, uh, Nick Bosa, he was uh, the best guy on one of the best defensive teams. So it's like that yeah. pretty much says it all right there. And um, I know um, I'm jumping the gun early here, but for snubs and stuff, you could say probably Sauce Gardner could be on there. I don't think he would have won it, but at the yeah. same time, like putting that consideration on yeah, there for okay. everything he did yeah. uh, for that season, it's like I thought like maybe he would get um, at least a recognition, yeah. mm -hmm. just like Micah Parsons and Chris Jones. Now, they both were uh, great, and I mean, Micah Parsons, it's like... Um, he's still continuing up what he did uh, the last year with like winning defensive rookie of the year and now uh, what he's doing this year So um, I could definitely see him being on there and then uh, Chris Jones the same thing like he's been that guy For yeah. pretty much the whole entire season, yeah. mm -hmm. but for me. Yeah best defensive player on the uh, one of the best defensive teams I would definitely have to give it to Bosa. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I got Nick Bosa as well, so <laughs> uh, snub, I'm going to throw a name out that uh, not many people know. It's his second year in the NFL, but he was second in tackles, and he is oh, in the yeah. Super Bowl. My man, Nick Bolton, is a beast. Yes. If you guys do not know that name, he's incredible. He's involved in like almost every play. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, you could start seeing like this guy's going to be a stud. I forget what college came out of, but it was, uh, but he's just, I think it was Missouri, actually. That sounds right. I think it was Missouri. Yeah, probably. So, uh, but just incredible athlete. Uh, he added some sacks and some interceptions this year, too. And he's definitely one of the focal points on that defense for the Chiefs as well. So that's going to be one of my snubs. And he just doesn't have a big enough name yet. I think that's one of the reasons why he didn't get uh, a nomination for that. So Nick Bolton's guess. a cool name, though. Yeah, yeah. so. It was a cool name, yeah. yeah. Another Nick. In the, in the, uh... Well, that's why I'm saying because yeah. Nick is the best name. So <laughs> this guy. <laughs> what do we got for the next one? You got any snubs? What do you got? Uh, well, one of my snubs was um, <clears throat> Sox, right? Uh, Sox, okay. yeah. So it's like I said, yeah. with what um, he did this uh, season and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I, I don't think he would have won the award, yeah. but it was just like Micah Parsons last year. He was Defensive Rookie of the Year, and I think he was one of the recognitions for also Defensive, defensive Player, player yeah. of the Year. He didn't yeah. win it because of T.J. Watt, but still, he had mm -hmm. a great season, yeah, so yeah. you could say. I'm, I'm partial to like the, all the secondary guys. I like, I don't know, I, I like safeties in the corner, so I always like to see at least one of them represented, and... Like this kind of sounds like a homer pick, but Marlon, Marlon Humphrey didn't give up a TD all year, so I mean he's. I think he made the Pro Bowl at least, so that's good. You could also throw a couple stages up up there, like make a Fitzpatrick, Justin Simmons, yeah. like one of them. They were they were they had pretty good years. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's hard to argue against Nick Bosa overall. Yeah. So. Uh, and to talk about Humphrey and also uh, Sauce, uh, a lot of times when they don't throw to people because they're that good, it hurts their chances too yeah. because of the the, the yeah. numbers aren't there. The stats. There, there should be a stat for that. Like yeah, I how many times not thrown to exactly <laughs> because that. I mean, a lot of times they say in defense and hockey too. If if you don't come up on the score sheet, a lot of times it means you're doing a great job because yep. because uh, people aren't going towards you or you're not allowing goals or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. So I agree 100. Yeah, like back, like Nandi Asimov, Champ Bailey, like back in the day, yeah. like they they'd mm -hmm. get like 16 targets the whole year. 
and they yeah you're not gonna you know, get tackled that happens yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. you can't rack up stats that way so it just needs to do your job Marlon Humphrey also made a, um, a game winning dodgeball catch in the Pro Bowl games <laughs> so got the, you got the Pro Bowl you, you got it, so yeah. you gotta check that out <laughs> I think next is coach of the year so we got uh, we Ryan, go. what's that I said here we go yeah we got, uh, <laughs> so we got five nominees here good uh, good spread here. All playoff teams, Brian Dayball, Giants, uh, Sean McDermott on the Bills, Doug Peterson, Jaguars, Kyle Shanahan, 49ers, and then uh, Nick Sirianni on the Eagles. Mm. Mm. So this one's hard. This is hard. Yeah. Yeah. Good, all, good all, choices. All good yeah. choices, yeah. Um, I mean, if, if it were to, it's Andy Reid, if it were me, like I, I, I like consistency. Like I like picking the best team usually every year yeah. rather than these surprise guys. Like so Dayball. snub. Yeah, so that's my snub guy. I mean, if it's off of just like like shock value, it's Brian Dable probably or maybe Peterson because they just like these teams probably shouldn't have made the playoffs. Um, Overcoming the most adversity, I'd probably go Shanahan here. Honestly, I know they were just in the Super Bowl a couple years back. They just they were a dropped interception away from making the Super Bowl last year. But to to like even get to the spot where your your third or your fourth string quarterback has you at least contending for the Super Bowl is pretty significant. but I mean, I, there's a case for all these guys. I'll probably go Shanahan though, just because, yeah. yeah, just because of the adversity factor. Who you got, Nick? So what I got, <laughs> and <laughs> what a tough <laughs> list. But I'm gonna have to go with Mike McCarthy. Ah, here we go. I have to go, go, with Mike McCarthy. go back to yeah, last year's video. Yeah, last year's video. This guy Mike McCarthy. is a comedian. <laughs> oh yeah, oh boy, Mike McCarthy, the coach of the year. All I think McCarthy's paying this guy to just say his name like five times a minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so for this one, I'm gonna say um, um, I'm actually gonna do two here. Who, who do I want to win, and who I think's gonna win? What I want to win. Look at what Brian Dayball did. Nobody can do this guy. This guy. Is I, said I said want. I said want. Matt, I think you're good when you bring up Baltimore stuff because this guy, this guy. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we have to spread it around here yeah. for purposes here. So, um, so yeah, Brian Dayball. That's the guy I want to win because. I even had like the Giants like not doing good at all this season because look at the staff, uh, look at the players that they had. It's like, um, and then that was before I saw Saquon do his thing. So I'm like, oh man, how would the how are the Giants going to be even competing this year? And look at what the roster that they had with a, only a new coach. They didn't really do much to their um, roster, and it's like they made it to the playoffs. They won a playoff game. Yeah. So I'm just like, you have to put all those into the factor here. Brian Dayball has done an amazing job, and I think. Um, He's going to be the coach of the Giants for years to come. He's, sure. they're, they're going to be a great team for years to come um, if they get um, a couple more pieces in. But that's why I want to win. Who I think is going to win. Um, got to go with Shanahan here because yeah. how many QBs has he had? Yeah. And, and look at the NFC champ. He's just like, I'm just having bad luck with yeah. these QBs. But he still makes it work somehow. Trey Lance, Jimmy G, and then Brock Purdy and Josh Johnson. McCaffrey. I'm just like, and then McCaffrey, yeah. yeah. And then he could have put in Debo. He could have put in Ayuk. Yeah. He could have put in any of these guys at quarterback. But they're still just amazing because the amount of talent that he has. And Kyle Shanahan is one of the best play callers in the mm-hmm. league. So it's like, with everything that he did, going all the way to the NFC Championship game, I got to give it to Shannon in here. But... I mean, who do I want to win? Brian Dable, but I also have to throw Mike McCarthy in there. I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue. Unreal. Okay. So for me, now nah, I got it. Go so for me, I got um, I got Kyle Shanahan as well. I think he is going. Actually, hold on. Let me say this. I want him to win. I think Kyle Shanahan should win because of what these guys said. He was second in the NFC, um, and to go through all those quarterbacks, um, I think he should win. That's not who I think is going to win, though. Um, who I think is going to win is going to be Doug Peterson because of the, the fiasco with Urban Meyer last year. <laughs> and for them to turn it around one year later, they had the first overall pick in the draft again this past year. And they, they not only made the playoffs, but they won one, uh, one round and then moved on to the second round. They had so. the biggest comeback, I believe, in the playoffs, right? Yeah. 27 down. Yeah, yeah. crazy. So, so to me, I think Doug Peterson is going to win the award. And I'm okay, I'm okay with that because I, I, I like Doug Peterson a lot. Um, but it is a shame because who I think should win it is uh, Kyle Shanahan. Uh, but I, honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with anybody on that list, really. So yeah. I mean, you should like Peterson. He gave Philly the first ever Super Bowl. 100%. He's like, just a stand-up guy, too. So, so I like him. So. Yeah. All right. Here comes the big one. What do we got? Probably not any snubs there, either. Uh, this is MVP, so this is probably the most important one. You have four QBs and a receiver. So you got Josh Allen of the Bills, Joe Burrow of the Bengals, 
Uh, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, Jalen Hurts, Eagles, and then Justin Jefferson as the uh, as the lone receiver on the list. <laughs> yeah. So I love how they throw one position. Yeah. Yeah. So well, they say, "Oh no, we promise it's not a QB yeah, 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 Look, yeah, yeah. we have yeah, a receiver it's... in there. We have a running back in there. Yeah. We'll even throw a defensive player in there. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, it's a little diversity, I guess, with you know the receiver there. But yeah, I mean, th- this one's easy. Like just Mahomes on a different level. Um, I mean, Josh Allen probably. He was up in the running, probably up until late in the year. I think he, he like kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, Hurts, it's fair to have Hurts up there as well. You know, they were they were the best team. You gotta you gotta have them up there. Yeah. Um, I don't know what their record was when Hurts was in. I think it was like fourteen and one or, or something like that. Like because he didn't play every single game. Yeah. But I don't think Mahomes missed a single game all year. Uh, he he's just you know he's battled through injuries. He he lost his top option. He lost possibly like the fastest receiver in maybe in NFL history. Just yeah. like the most so fast. breakaway speed ever and. You know, people were doubting Kelsey all year. Kelsey did what he does, what he always does. Um, if he doesn't already have it, he's going to have the most uh, yards by a tight end um, after the Super Bowl, like yeah. in, in playoff history. I think touchdowns as well, something like that. So, I mean, Mahomes just, he doesn't quite have the weapons that some of these other QBs on here are working with. Um, and, and he still gets it done. I don't remember how many yards he finished with, but he also led the league, I think, in, the, I don't know if he led it in touchdowns. I think he did. I think it's TDs yeah. and yards. So, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's hard to argue that. And, you know, also, you know, keeping a good, like, touchdown and interception ratio as well. Like, Allen threw a good amount of picks. Joe Burrow won a game this year. He threw four picks in it. They still won. So, yeah. like, there's just stuff like that that I kind of knocked some of these other guys on. Justin Jefferson, there's only so much you can do yeah. as, yeah. as, like, a wide receiver. But yeah. you, know, you have one job, catch the ball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was he the best receiver. So, I mean, if it, was, if it was, like, do your job to the best of your ability, like, you know, he's definitely, he's in the conversation. But it's hard to, you can't pick against Mahomes. Like, he's, I agree. So, Especially when you're giving... Yeah. And I, I'm a Aaron Rodgers hater, but especially when you're giving him <laughs> MVPs, when I think Mahomes is doing more impressive than what Aaron Rodgers did uh, in his last uh, MVP. So, who do you got, Nick? Uh, for this one, yeah, so um, yeah, it's a pretty uh, pretty good list. Um, but for me, I would say uh, Patrick Mahomes. Like, um, it's like you look at everything he did too, with like the touchdowns and uh, the yards, number one of those, it's like, look at who he was throwing to other than Travis Kelsey. Obviously Travis Kelsey is the best tight end in the league, but you look at these other receivers, you had Juju Smith-Schuster, you had Nicole Hardman, you, uh, well, Canaries Tony came in there, yeah. um, I think yeah. in the second half of the yeah. season. Yeah. And then um, there was um, another Justin guy. Watson. <laughs> Justin Watson. Justin Watson, who is he now? But yeah. again, yeah. it's yeah. like, uh, what, what this uh, season has shown is like, um, with the with the loss of Tyreek Hill, people were saying like, "Oh, now uh, Mahomes is going to have a down year." No, he actually upgraded from last year. So what the season yeah. is showing is like the receivers don't make the quarterback. The quarterback made the receivers. Yeah. He he did more with less. And to be number one and to continue on into the Super Bowl and stuff. And for our picks, uh, we picked Mahomes to win because yeah. of everything of what he can do. He's yeah. just an amazing talent, and it's like. It's, like you said, so hard to pick against him. You could make an argument for Jalen Hurts because um, he did everything with, like, his arm and his legs. And, like, he only had one loss in the entire season or something like yeah. that because, yeah. like, he only had that one loss to the – um, no, it was the Commanders. Commanders. He only okay. had that one loss yeah, to the Commanders in the division game. Yeah. But then the other two losses that they had, that was Gardner Minshew. Yeah. That was not Jalen Hurts. All the other games they played, he won. So mm-hmm. he only lost one game. Yeah. So I can see the argument for Jalen Hurts here. But it's like Mahomes was just leading at everything. Yeah. And like I said, he did more with less. Jalen Hurts, I think, has more weapons than Mahomes does. And Mahomes still does what he does. So for that alone, and Josh Allen, it's like, he had a good season, but he had too many red zone um, turnovers. And it's like it's so, like it's so tough for me to give an award after you yeah. have that many red zone turnovers. It's like... He had some bad games, too. So. He mm-hmm. did have some bad games, yeah. yeah. It's like some games were easily winnable for them, and they just gave it up because yeah. of those red zone turnovers. So for me, I got, I got Mahomes. Yeah. I don't need to say any more than that. <laughs> yeah, again, I'm going Patrick Mahomes, too. I think it was just his year. Uh, we, t- we talked about it. I'm not going to speak too long on what has already been covered. But I think the two factors that give him the MVP is we talked about already with um, his division was supposed to be this super stacked division, and he quieted that quickly. Um, That shows you MVP talent, and it shows you his talent as well. Um, The other thing is Jalen Hurts, I think, would have been more considered if he didn't miss games. I think that really hurt him, especially towards the end of the season. He he missed those two games. That, I think, is going to hurt his chances. But I think it's going to be Mahomes is going to win. I think Jalen Hurts is going to be second, and then... Doesn't really matter after that, so. Mm-hmm. But guys, those, that is our awards for the uh, for the picks. Definitely put your picks in the comments. Uh, make sure you let us know who you think is going to win each award. 
I'll post it out in the first comment, and you can kind of go off of that. So, guys, can't thank you guys enough. We'll be back in a few weeks. Yep. Maybe, maybe a little bit longer than that to, to do our next video. So, But, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, continue to follow the page. Give God the glory in every video that we do. Again, amazing. Oh, Fun stuff. Awesome. So, yeah, Chiefs man. are going to win the Super Bowl. So. Mike McCarthy, <laughs> Coach of the Year. So, I'm going to have to cut that out because uh, <laughs> our prediction video is going to be out of this. <laughs> I got it, Nick. Do your thing. <laughs> Just imagine now in Game Changer, we're going to be talking about Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would make content for that. I'm somewhat educated. Playing Pokemon. Hey, yeah. he, has, he does have his own YouTube channel, so. Yeah. Do you? Well, I should, oh, he's been having his YouTube channel. Well, just the. Just, I have a dodgeball just one. Dodgeball. Yeah. Oh, I've been meaning to make one for like personal finance stuff and yeah. like review different credit cards. Mm -hmm. nice. I need. That's why I bought this ring light and stuff, but yeah. I haven't actually done it yet. So. Yeah, listen, this is motivation. At some point, I'll, I'll put it together. This, like, is gonna, this is all going to go on the We're all going to merge. A lot, a lot has gone, like, a, there's been so much going on around here, so it's been hard to, like, find time. That's a terrible excuse, but, like, you always have time. I know exactly what you're talking about. I do about. need to. Oh, no, I was about to say, if anybody knows about time uh, team managing, this guy. Yeah. <laughs>